the story of a man who was exonerated after being in prison for 25 years and another wrongful conviction tossed him in the questionable tactics of retired detective Louis Scarcella. So I'm gonna tell you about this story. Sean Williams is his name. He, uh, he was in prison for 25 years after, and his murder conviction was just recently thrown out. Um, and, uh, and he was convicted of murdering his best friend when he was 17 years old. The past five years were especially tough for the 41 year old Brooklyn man as his lawyers worked to overturn his murder conviction, which was based largely on the work of disgraced NYPD detective Louis Scarcella. With hard edged hope and a couple of dedicated lawyers on his side, Williams on Friday finally heard the words he'd been waiting for and more. The prosecution agreed to toss his conviction and will not retry him. As the sole witness who convicted him 25 years ago, Margaret Smith Letty recanted her testimony in 2009, nine years ago, and signed an affidavit in 2015 for the consideration of the Brooklyn District Attorney Conviction Review Unit. Smith Letty, who is ill, did not want to cooperate any longer and is unavailable for a hearing, a prosecutor said, uh, told Justice Sharon Hudson on Friday. The prosecutor alerted the judge that since Smith Letty, 63, was the only witness in the case, there is no case, and the DA's office did not object to vacating Williams' conviction. She, why did she, why did she recant? She was the sole eyewitness to a murder. Recanting is very serious. Let's find out why. According to court documents, Scarcella and Stephen Schmill, who were the, the, uh, the detectives on the case, were the lead detectives who pressured Smith Letty to say Williams was the shooter. Despite having viewed the scene from her sixth floor apartment, the shooter was described as being five foot two. Williams is over six feet tall. Smith Letty relocated to Georgia from Brooklyn to escape the officer's coercion, but they tracked her down and held her in custody as a material witness until she testified, said who? Since 2014, the CRU has overturned convictions for 14 people. Nine are linked to Scarcella, including one in which prosecutors cite his name. Williams is the fifth person to be exonerated in a case Scarcella is accused of tainting. How can he get away with this? Asked Williams brother Rodney, 53, about Scarcella outside of court. My baby brother was 17 when he was taken away from his family all these years, and for what? So we got a case of a detective who clearly, a rogue detective, framing people and uh, harassing a witness into testifying against him, one eyewitness. Uh, okay, so. What's the next story I wanna bring in? This is unrelated, but very related. It's from the Miami Herald. This is a story you might have heard about. This chief wanted perfect stats, so cops were told to pin crimes on black people probe found. This was in a, a suburb of Miami. Records obtained by the Miami Herald suggest that during the tenure of former chief Raimundo Atasiano, the command staff pressured some officers into targeting random black people to clear cases. If they have burglaries that are open, cases that are not solved yet, if you see anybody black walking through our streets and they have somewhat of a record, arrest them so we can pin them for all the burglaries, said one cop burglaries. Uh, Anthony De La Torre said in an internal probe ordered in 2014, they were basically doing this to have a 100% clearance rate for the city. Amid the probe, Atasiano abruptly resigned in 2014. Afterward, there was a stark change in village crime busting statistics. Okay, that story was covered on the main show. You may have seen it. It's uh, pretty much cut and dry if we, if we can believe these officers who testified to this, that he said, it doesn't matter if they're guilty, if they've got a record, which a lot of African Americans do, young African Americans do, picked up on drug busts, planted evidence, what have you, because they are targeted by police. So we have the case of the uh, of Williams, who was uh, uh, 6'4". She didn't wanna do it, she moved out of state to get away from this guy, and you know, and he tracked her down, brought her back to New York, and put her in custody until she testified against this guy, who's six feet. The guy who committed the crime was five foot two. But he went to jail for 25 years on that. And how many other cases, you know, the, any case this guy is involved in now needs to be cleared, needs to be thrown out. All right, Chicago has paid $662 million over police misconduct. That's since like 1995 or something. $662 million, the, the taxpayers of Chicago have forked over for misconduct by police. Last thing I wanna show you is a little video of the LAPD from a, a recent news story. You may have seen this before, but I think it's just too, too compelling not to show. So uh, I'm not even gonna explain it, just go ahead and roll it. 52 year old Ronald Shields was arrested for felony hit and run, possession of cocaine and having a gun in his trunk. Officer Lee is seen here searching the suspect. He testified in court, the same as what the police report shows, that the cocaine was found in Shields' front left pocket. 
But the video shows an entirely different story that brings up even more questions. Watch this angle from the beginning. LAPD officer Gaxiola picks up Shields' wallet from the street, shows it to Officer Lee, who points to the suspect as if to say it's his. He puts it back down, then steps on the street, bends over and picks up a small bag with white powder. It eventually tested positive for drugs. He goes back on the sidewalk, picks up the wallet, and motions to Lee, and appears to put the bag in the wallet. Now, if you're wondering why anyone would allegedly do this while being recorded, this could be the reason. You hear the audio and saw the officer's hand. That's when he actually activated the recording on the camera. But what he may not have known is that the previous 30 seconds is automatically saved without audio. And if you rewind those 30 seconds, that's where this all takes place. Uh, you know, it's exhausting going through. And these are just, I mean, these are just randomly selected. These stories are countless. The people who are wrongly convicted, railroaded by the police, predominantly African Americans, minorities. And uh, then, you I mean, the evidence that this one police force that they said go and get black people. Doesn't matter if, who they are, if anything to do with the crimes. Meanwhile, they're not solving the crimes. The actual crime is not getting solved. After the guy leaves, they don't solve the crimes anymore. They don't, they don't do that. We got, we got the Chicago and other municipalities paying out millions and millions of dollars to, uh, to account or to cover for the police and their misconduct. And then you got people being framed by the police like this. And, it, and this kind of thing, how often does this go on? This, this one idiot cop, because he doesn't know how his, his body cam works, gets caught. But it's gotta be you know, systemic, of course it is. And anybody who's suggesting that African Americans are not targeted by the police in this, in this country, what the? I mean, that is unacceptable. You, you should be dismissed. No one should listen to you. The evidence is overwhelming. Russia Gate, this is the evidence. This is, this is, com this is completely uh, inescapable. How can you deny it? It's, no, the, the problem is Colin Kaepernick kneeling. That is the real problem in America. Are you sick and tired of corporate Democrats as much as we are? Do you think we can have what the rest of the world has? Then come watch the aggressive progressives with us on the Young Turks Network.